if you um, to frame it if you be there at the networking event you can try I think Pete Jemmy has a question about the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you For me, at the, at the end goal is the story that touch human, that move people. Um, there's a lot of like stories that um, make money. Like if you're into movies, there are so many like blockbuster movie that makes a lot of money. But for me, it's not a very good film. Have you ever feel that? So, for me, um, it different from the perspective and the objective of the storyteller. Ah, okay, I can I can find the answer right now. Good story for me. You mentioned that listening is a very important skill. What about public speaking? How do how important do you think that is? Like for our generation and the society that we're moving towards? I think uh, public speaking, uh, combination or what I would like to call it storytelling, is always and have been the key skills for human. If that human wants to thrive in any tribe, in any village or in any company, in any society, isn't it? Because I think we are weak, uh, like animals. But what uh, if you read Serpian, the, the secret sauce of uh, Homo sapien is the communication. We can tell stories. That's why we um, get rid of other <laughs> uh, beings in the world and try and, and can rule the world right now and even destroying the world we live right now because we can tell stories. If you go to chimpanzee and like uh, tell them that like if you do good things, you will go to heaven. Human C will not believe you, right? <laughs> Human C will not donate money for you to be a church or do that kind of like the weird things that humans do as a society but because we can, we can dream, we can make up some stories, some good, some bad. Um, storytelling is a very powerful tool, very powerful skill but also a dangerous skill. I've seen so many people who master very, very good public speaking and harm others' life. Like Hitler, he's a very good storyteller, very really compelling one mm, compared to the person who born at the same age, same year with him, like um, Charlie Chaplin. He also tells stories without speaking a word, but he can like spark an idea, disrupting the entertainment industry. It's about like what you choose to do after you're getting good at it, this storytelling stuff. But before you're getting good at it, a lot of hard work needs to be done. Like you have to listen a lot. You have to, uh, for me, I have like listen and reading a lot of like how-to books, like Dale Carnegie's classic stuff. You gotta read it. You gotta read Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's uh, the book that my dad throw it in front of my face and when I was like more strong and told me that like uh, he's not like a book person he read a very few books and he built his company 90% uh, from this book mm. even if he's like a handicapped person mm. yeah so a lot of hard work you can google it you can read so many content um, find many YouTubes but I have to tell you these skills no matter what you're doing, you are engineer, you architecture, that would be the occupation, like the expert of the occupation. You can go uh, look at one of the like great architect skills. One of them is the public speaking, one of them is the sales, one of them is like storytelling. So doing the thing that you love good is okay. But if you can talk about the thing that you do great, it's gonna make you an expert. A really important skill, but like they don't teach it in school. Really, even in the national school, like you guys, do you have class of like public speaking or like no? At our school, yeah. there, yeah, there was a mandatory, but like they canceled it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's now not like a mandatory. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, I think it's important. And I don't know why they don't teach it, but um, maybe because it's hard to teach. Maybe. Because it's a thing that even if like you keep talking to me like for three more days, I cannot, I cannot make you a better storyteller. You have to go on the set. You have to get in that ring. If you're a boxer, right, you have to be better at your boxing, yes. at your public speaking. You have to find your stage. For me, I like, I went to be an MC. I find that every time I can convince my friend to go to that restaurant that I want to make the whole gang go to that restaurant. I find a way to convince them because storytelling and, and persuasion is like the skills that we can practice actually like every moment in our daily life, right? You don't have to wait for the next presentation. You can negotiate to your mom about like and you die and you want to go study abroad for, and it have to like persuade her to give you a lot of money. You have a chance and a stage to practice it every time. But if you uh, frame it as a on stage thing, it will be so hard to find the opportunity to learn, right? Yeah. So how how has your dad uh, inspired you to initiate the Glow Story company? Since you've mentioned that he's mm. handicapped. Mm. He not really encouraged me, he discouraged me to do this stuff. <laughs> my, my dad is a very business person. Like he like, um, how to say, measurable, profitable business is the successful business for him. So he's a, doing trading company. He's selling the uh, refrigerator uh, stuff. So, so this thing creates CFC and yeah. destroy the environment. So maybe that's why his son have to <laughs> repay the debt. Um, and yeah, that, that money kind of like give me opportunity to go like AFS to be an exchange student to be able to afford my international um, um, uh, university that I take. So he actually wished me to like to pass on his business to me. But I don't feel like I want to do it. Do, do you guys have the same challenge? Yes. Yeah. But How do you feel right now? Like we did like. It, it's sometimes like uh, pressurizing when you get like placed into a box where you're kind of like going to take on this job after them. But it's also a kind of like a safety net as well mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, when I think like from another perspective, if I were to not have a job in the future and no one cares about me anymore, so I might as well go back and work there and help with my, mm -hmm. you know, fam the family business. Yeah. You got the same issue? It's how does it do? It's not really the same issue. Like my dad's a doctor, and he he's always like, "You should go into medicine because definitely." Like I, I've spoken to a lot of my cousins, and and somehow they always said like, if they could turn back time, they would have become a doctor because yeah, like highlight said, it, it's sort of like a safety net. It's a really low chance that you're gonna like lose your job. But like for me personally, I wanted to go. I want to go into like computer science. I actually want to start my own business. Like, but I mean, having that safety net is always good. But I think like you don't always need to do what your family has done. Maybe you could like make your own path. It'd be nice. Yeah. For me, first of all, that safety net is a blessing. To be honest, we like people sitting in this room is like. 2%, 1% of the society of like the, the population, right? So we're lucky that we born in the right place, right? So for me, I have that safety net so that I have like a um, feeling of safety enough to have a courage to start my own thing. So that safety net is not being wrong. And my, my, my brother go back to help uh, my dad business and he like, do it very well, but in every game you choose to go to, in every area you choose to go to, there's a tough part about it. If you choose to go back to that safety net, there's a shadow. Like um, being a second generation mm -hmm. is like you're filling the the glass of water with a hole that like 
they have some expectation because they're building this themselves oh. and they have their own way so you have to earn that trust you have to like create new stuff and no matter like how big you grow that company they'll feel like <laughs> so it's not gonna be like easy things to do but it's it's the interesting thing if you like want to go there and there's always like learning going back to family business so many people go back to business but few make them like even better like so many like second second like owner like can turn around or rebrand the, the family business into a very cool stuff and you know when when you go to my age or if you're all talking about this right now uh, at this age you think about like your friends think about like the person you see on the media is a lot but when you're at my age when your family is like getting sick and you want to spend more time with them like going back to the family business is one of the best way you can get close to your family and at the end like it's family that be there for you your friends they have to take care of their life they have to take care of their own family right so family is important if going back to help them is your contribution go for it but if you want to go outside and start your own thing it also are their heart and serious pressure on your shoulder but I think for me if any person will have like enough safety net I want to start that own business I at a very young age I would definitely support you to do that because when you get into 30s and you cannot like sleep late after midnight and still function in the next morning <laughs> next morning you want to do it at a very young age and yeah i seen a question about like um ความเป็นเด็กมันเป็นข้อเสียเปรียบไหมในสังคมนี้เขามองเราเป็นเด็กใช่มั้ย but i think for for thai people for for thai culture yes. we have this like weird but i think i kind of like it uh, the culture of like endu ผู้ใหญ่เค้าเอ็นดูเด็กๆจริงๆนะ mm-hmm. and as a young people you have this privilege of looking young <laughs> really really they want to give you more opportunities they want to give a chance to the, this kid and see if it like this is worth it the opportunity i get but it's a แบบดาบสังคมเนาะมีคนมากมายที่แบบว่าอ่าเรามาทําสมมุตินะเรามาทํา TEDx แล้วก็บอกโอ้เอาโลโก้ TEDx นี่แหละขอไปคุยกับนักธุรกิจคนนู้นคนนี้เพื่อ everybody want to get a better connection right want to spread that network but if you do it well yeah that's good is the opportunity แบบพี่คนนี้บอกต่อว่าน้องคนนี้เก่งมากเลยน้องไฮไลท์แบบโอ้ติดต่อมาเตรียมคําถามมืออาชีพมากเลย that's your credit but if you reach out to those like high net worth people and you deal with them like not very good mm-hmm. they remember and they talk about you with other person so there's just a possibility about uh, about it like getting to like a high uh, network kind of thing if, if you do good it's, it's spread if you do bad it's also spread as well so for me if you have a safety net you think you a little bit ready to start your own thing and you got this card of like being young and people i think overall want to help the, the young people do it do it you fail you will cry a lot you will fight with your friends you will quit sometimes or you will like lost a lot of tears and, and sweat and sometimes blood <laughs> but it's worth it mm, because like, so many research so many like uh, TED talk you can go watch it uh, regret mostly come from not doing mm, but those who do something and it fail is not really a regret it's a learning mm. yeah. uh, you've mentioned how like networking is like a two-sided coin you could do it in a positive mm. way and it could negatively impact you so what piece of advice would you like to give to those who are networking and would like to maintain a positive and good relationship with others? I think, I think, um, come back to the contribution thing. If you're there at any communities, at the uh, networking events, um, don't go there and try to put your name card as much as possible. Don't do that. Because people don't care about the, the, the name card. They will throw it away 
the moment you <laughs> you walk away. I do that sometimes <laughs> because we we didn't remember people from the name card. So if you know what is your value, or you try to uh, contribute some values to the people you met with at that day or the day later, they want to be there with you because you giving something to them, right? Pe human is a selfish uh, animal being, right? So I think uh, try to find a way to help other people by like, oh, you want this thing? You're doing this thing? I have some of my friends doing this thing too. You want to come and just something like that. Or if you don't have anything or do, you cannot come, uh, recommend anything to them, just be a good listener. That's one of the easiest things. You have to practice a little bit, but it's the best, one of the, the good things that you can do at the networking event where human just gathering and um, almost all of them want to talk about their own stories. So think of the demand supply. If you, want, if you dare and want to be a listener, you have a lot of demand. Because like I said, not a lot of people be, want to be there and listen. So if you can listen, they will feel like, um, okay, let me give you one more suggestion. If you um, to frame it, if you be there at the networking event, you can try. Okay, okay. I think Pete Jemmy has a question about story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think makes a good story? Mm. Oh, so hard. I ask this question every day. What makes a good story? For me, at the, at the end goal is the story that touch human, that move people. Um, there's a lot of like stories that um, makes money. Like if you're into movies, there are so many like blockbuster movie that makes a lot of money. But for me, it's not a very good film. Have you ever feel that? So, for me, um, it different from the perspective and the objective of the storyteller. Ah, okay, I can I can find the answer right now. Good story for me is the story that align with the speaker's intention. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh, thank you for your question. Um, yeah, because I think as a curator. I help a lot of people who have like talent and have very cool ideas, but the way they used to tell stories is not reflecting the best version of them. Like so many scientists, they're so smart, they're so like sexy with the work they're doing. I have curated one of the speakers who like do the research about the movement of the tail of sperm. The, the sperm have a tail, right? And he put some colors and do some like artsy stuff in the in the sperm kind of thing it's so weird but that isn't that cool yeah. but when you talk about that in terms of like a, a mass like local audience it seems like what, you, what the fuck are you doing You're like <laughs> oh, why would you do that kind of thing but when you can help them reframe it and and what i try, always try to find from my speaker is not only their stories it's about what you want to happen after this talk. What is the change that you actually try to make? What is uh, the thing that you, as a speaker or as a tour guide, want to bring the audience from point A to point B? What is that gap? If you can find that and you align the story to meet that intention, I think it's always like make a good story because um, there's so many, so many use cases no? when you're using Telling the, story, telling the story. You want to maybe improve your sales of your brand. You want to rebrand uh, your product. Or maybe you want to pitch your mom to send you to study abroad. Maybe you want to convince your friends to go to the restaurant. Everything is storytelling. So the first question is what is your ob objective? Where you want to drive the listener? If you can find that like answer in the beginning of like planning your story, I think it will help.
What's the importance of rephrasing um, the story? It, that you've mentioned that if we were to rephrase the story, it would make it more understandable, relatable, and maybe more appealing to your target audience. Mm -hmm. So, in your uh, so based on your experience, what's the importance of um, like paraphrasing it and making it more credible? And what's your technique behind mm -hmm. doing that? Mm -hmm. So many techniques here, um, but what I try to do, uh, what I try to contribute as a curator is, I try to be the most stupid person in the room for my speaker. Because the curse of doers or so-called nerd is that จมในเรื่องของตัวเองโอ้เรื่องนี้เราน่าสนใจพอเล่าเรื่องแบบสนใจเรื่องอาร์กิเทคแบบโอ้เรื่องนี้ก็ดีเรื่องนี้ก็อ
but people will never forget how you made them feel. When you when they see your face again, oh, this kid, she give me the feeling of like passion. I can see it. I can feel it from their eyes. It's like when if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, and I ask you why you love them, you cannot say one. Exact action or words that make you love them. For example, like your mom, your parents. Why you love them? It's not one action. It's not one word. It's but it's like how they make you feel overall. Some mom is a strict mom, tiger mom. They make you feel tense and you want to be a better, good, great and stuff. Some moms make you feel safe. So come back to public speaking. I think it's relationship building. What kind of human you want to be for your audience? How you want to make them feel? You want to be their friends? You want to be their teachers? You want to be their preachers? You want to be their um, um, leaders? What kind of leaders? Leaders like the existing prime minister is one style. t e a c h e r t o m podium, t o n public speaking is one style. There are so many speakers. Um, so come back to the question of like public speaking. I think it's about. The way human communicate, right? The way human connect, we connect through words, to body language, to the eye. So, public speaking, storytelling is the combination of these things: the word you say, the thing you give them. In in this relationship, is an 80 m i n u t e relationship or it's like a lifetime relationship. So, yeah, for me, that's my suggestion: how you want to make them feel and. What kind of human you want to be for your audience? How do you aim to like spread this art of storytelling through your business close story? Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't have to spread it because uh, close story is started because of the belief in the story, the power of story by itself. Me and my friends like believe in it like equally. So we, I, I also think that business is like the the question, the pillars of question that these entrepreneurs, these like employees and teams, and also clients, trying to find some answer together. Especially like service uh, business like mine. So I'm a agency, right? Every time client come with a question, uncrafted question, like I want to increase my sales. So I have to add more question. What? Uh, and the question is um, like evolving around story. Like, so you want to increase your sales. Who want to get? Who who you want to get the money from? Who do you want to buy that stuff? So this human, or you want to connect with this human? Okay. So how you talk with them now? Oh, and and how do you feel about? How do they feel about you? Before or existing, like for example, hmm, let me give an answer for you. When c l o u doing work, we are not like okay, you want to sell stuff. This is our campaign, this video, and how we want to do it. We keep asking question about stories. So, for example, like Han Ku, their old brand, like, and the first thing we do is we research. We do a lot of research every project before we start the campaign, and the question we ask one of them is like. If we talk about Han Ku, what is the word that pops up into your mind? Now, what? Well, uh, let, let me ask you guys. Any words uh, come up from you guys? Han Ku. Do you know you know this brand? Uh, Have you? Han Ku. คุณแม่รู้จัก Han Ku ไหมครับมีอ่าใช่แล้วครับแต่พี่นี่พี่นี่ใช้ Han Ku ไหมครับมีมีคำอะไรลอยขึ้นมาบ้างมีคำอะไรลอยขึ้นมาบ้างพอพูดถึง Han Ku. คุณภาพดีนะครับไม่แพงคนบอกถูกมีไหมครับพี่มีไหมครับเสื้อยืดนะเอาไว้เจอคำแบบนี้เสื้อยืดสีขาวใส่ได้ทุกวันอันนี้เป็น positive side นะเวลาเราวิเศษใช่ปะแต่ก็จะมีคำอย่างเช่นแก่ผ้าบางเห็นหัวนมอากงใส่ใส่ตอนเด็กๆนะโตขึ้นมาไม่ใส่แล้วไม่ใส่นอนรุ่นเราแล้วใส่นอน and at the end of research นะใช่ใช่ใช่เห็นคำไหมอากงใส่ยุ้ยถูกใส่ปฏิบัติธรรม and they want to connect with our generation 
So the conclusion of relationship that we find before we do the campaign with Han Koo is like ถามว่าอ่าเจนวายเจนวายเจนซีหันคู่เป็นคนแบบไหนสำหรับคุณคำตอบคือเอาแปะในร้านชำ you can you can see the picture เอาแปะในร้านชำ right but ask this is this is question นะ who is the target or who is the competitor Uniqlo GQ who is Uniqlo for you who is Uniqlo for you if Uniqlo is a human Gen Z, any like celebrities or like cheek Japanese friends. Cheek Japanese friends. A lot of like people are just ya ya down the road. Ya ya down the road. One part ya ya, put on the Uniqlo, and put on the fleece, and go down the road. And Kung Hae look like Tokyo in a shop pan, right? That's our comedy. We are a gong in a restaurant. We have to we have to fight with ya ya down the road. Another one, GQ, GQ, sell clothes like us, right? GQ, have you heard of GQ? Have you heard of GQ? GQ ขายเสื้อเชิ้ตทำโฆษณาแบบว่าหูอินโนเวทีฟมากเป็นคนแบบอินโนเวทีฟน้ำกาแฟหกใส่ใช่ไหมสบับหนึ่งทีฟลุ๊บสัมภาษณ์งานต่อได้เลยเสื้อไม่เลอะมีแบบเทคโนโลยีโน่นนี่อะไรตั้มเต็มเต็มมากมายถ้าเป็นคนก็คือเป็นแบบพี่แท็บตัววิดมิชชั่นทูเดอะมูนเป็นแบบว่าองค์ทัพเนอร์สตาร์ทอัพเพอร์เซนอะไรแบบนี้ประมาณนั้นแปะล้านชำนี่คือคําถามที่เราถามมันเกี่ยวกับรีเลชั่นชิพหมดเลยเนาะว่าแบบว่าเฮ้ยคอนซูมเมอร์คุณเห็นแบรนด์เราเป็นอะไรเพราะฉะนั้นโจทย์ของเราอ่ะมันก็เป็นการตั้งคําถามว่าเฮ้ยเราจะเล่าเรื่องเนี่ยเราเห็นความสําคัญหรือยังแล้วเราอยากเปลี่ยนความสัมพันธ์จากอแปะในร้านชามอากงที่ใส่เสื้อยุ้ยๆเนี่ยไปเป็นอะไรเราก็มาดูแล้วเฮ้ยแล้วถ้าเราอยากเข้าไปจีบเขาอ่ะอยากไปเป็นเพื่อนกับเขาอยากไปมีความสัมพันธ์ใหม่กับเขาอ่ะเขามีปัญหาอะไรเวลาเราเป็นเพื่อนเนี่ยเราไม่ได้เดินหาแบบเออเพื่อนมาติวข้อสอบให้ฉันหน่อยมาแบบเออช่วยฉันทําสิ่งนี้หน่อยแต่เรา give first way we listen to them first as a friend we will listen to them too มีปัญหาอะไรอ๋อรู้สึกผิดกับการเป็นคนธรรมดาว่ะสึกแย่ตลอดเวลาเลยเวลาที่เปิด t ิ k t o k แล้วก็เห็น t ิ k t o k ครีเอเตอร์เซอร์ไพรส์คุณแม่ด้วยการเอาเงินล้านไปให้วันเกิดคุณแม่รู้สึกแย่ตลอดเวลาเลยว่ะกลับบ้านไปดูทีวีแล้วก็เปิดรายการทีวีแล้วก็เห็นว่าโอ้เขาอายุน้อยร้อยล้านกันรู้สึกแย่ตลอดเวลาเลยขับรถนั่งรถติดตอนไปทํางานตอนเช้าแล้วก็เห็นบิลบอร์ดท็อปบิดครับบอกว่าแล้วชีวิตคุณจะเปลี่ยนไปคุณต้องคริปโตเคอเรนซีเราไปลงทุนแล้วก็ดอยเนี่ยเป็นคนธรรมดามันยากจังวะใช่ไหมอยากเป็นคนพิเศษมันแบบโอ้มันมันเหนื่อยนะมันเหนื่อยนะแต่พอเป็นคนธรรมดาปุ๊บเอารู้สึกผิดอีกเพราะสังคมบอกให้เราพิเศษนี่คือ the suffering that my the person I want to talk to is facing right now so as a human yes we sell stuff but we want to connect with them as a human too so how can we talk with them how can we Change our product line. How can we change our 